It's been a minute since I actually did a repair video. This is a neck cork repair video for a saxophone. If you don't know how to do it, this is an example of it. And there are some fails. The reason why I made this this particular way is because this is for a kid's saxophone. And I believe that he actually destroyed the first cork. So my goal here is not only to recork, but also make it harder to destroy. So here we go. First, we're gonna start with wetting our cork, and this is going to hopefully help it not break. Disclaimer, you can do all this stuff that I'm doing to cork. If it's still too dry, it will break. So now I'm just wiping it, and I'm trying to get as much moisture into this cork as I can. Nice thing is it's kept in a humid basement, which is our workspace at my side job. So hopefully it won't crack, but hey, who knows? This cork is obviously too long, so I'm just cutting it basically in half, and I know it will still be too long, but the idea is you can take stuff away, but you can't put it back, right? So here I'm rolling it to be sure that it is at least less likely to crack, and I try to roll it both ways. Here I'm just seeing how long I need the thing. And basically I do that by just wrapping it around and then I'm gonna figure out where my seams are gonna be. Next I'm just gonna cut this to a little bit over what I need because again, we can take away but we can't put back. We can put back in a, in a micro way but not in a macro way. So I personally have trouble making straight lines, so I tend to use a ruler or a grid or something. Here I'm just, again, going back to see how it fits, and then I'm just gonna keep customing it until it does fit. So here you can see I have it more the size that it needs to be. It's still too long. It still wraps around the neck way too much, so I need to start cutting more. And the only reason why you're interested in getting a straight line is because if you don't get a straight line, then it's not gonna line up correctly or as close as possible to a straight line. And a lot of times I find myself just kind of going over with the X-Acto knife and just correcting very small errors in my line. I have trouble with it because I have eye problems, so I like to use tools for that. So here, I'm seeing how tight I can get this thing around it and I am going to have to bevel the edges eventually but again this is we're just fitting it and you know making it work for the time being at this point because I've had too much cork crack too much in my life I'm just taking a light hammer and I'm just whacking the hell out of the head so that way it it will thin it out which is good because I know it's going to be too thick and it will also just make sure that it's a little bit more crack proof. It doesn't, it doesn't guarantee anything, so we'll see. So here again, I'm just rolling it to put it in the proper shape. And what I didn't like, you see I'm pointing out there, is that little ding. But it's okay because I can just sand it out. It's not a big deal. So here again, I'm just trying to get it as close as possible mostly to be sure that it's not going to distort the neck cork. And you can see it's looking pretty good. So now I'm just using my nail to make an indentation as to where I think I need to cut it next for the bevel. So we're going to go ahead and do that cut. If this is your first time doing this, remember this is all trial and error and just figuring out what fits best so you know you're custom making a, a piece basically, granted it's a piece of cork but you're still customizing it. So have patience with this and that's the name of the game. So you can see in this bench test this thing is doing a lot better. The wraparound is pretty good and it's pretty straight. I have that gap, but that gap is going to be fixed by beveling the cork itself. Basically, it's just the sand down. 
So here I'm just making sure that I can get that thing as tight as possible and that my line is good because I don't want any bare pieces of the neck. So beveling is the next step. Some people just cut it with an X-Acto knife and do it at the same angle, which is challenging. My co-worker told me that that comes from leather making, because uh, obviously you can't sand leather. <laughs> um, but this is a lot easier to do, so I've just switched to this method. Essentially what you're gonna do is thin out the ends so that way it will wrap around completely. And this takes some time. You have to have patience with this. And sometimes things break too, kids. So don't, especially if this is your first time, don't come in expecting everything to be amazing. It's not gonna be easy, it's not gonna be amazing, but you'll learn and you'll save some money. So here you can see I'm pointing out that the thing is uneven, so then I just go and I sand the uneven parts. Pretty simple, right? So now we're beginning to see the bevels take shape. I'm basically just inspecting it to see what else I need to sand down to make it as even as possible, and again, curling it as much as possible because I don't want any surprises. I put B on the part that I want to touch the neck, and then the overlapping part will go over it. So here we're just again going to test and I want to see how the bevels work and I'm also just making sure that I oriented this correctly. You actually put these on with a hard glue so you just want to get this right. And this is the way to do basically anything that you have to customize. Always test it, always do bench tests before you commit to actually installing something. So here I'm just looking at the the seam and how all that's gonna work. And it looks pretty good. This particular one is not as long as I wanted it to be. I wanted it to be slightly longer, believe it or not, because the longer it is, the harder it will be to just rip off, you know, especially new. So you can see there, there is that little bit of a gap. So guess what we're gonna do? Back to Sandy Sandy. Okay, so now more trial and error, just again trying that bevel, and it looks a lot neater. It's not, the bevel should always be as close to the bottom as possible, and ideally you want it at the bottom, just for aesthetic reasons. And what we're going to do is we're also, once the glue sets and everything, we're going to sand that seam down. And see, there's less of a gap there now. Which is good, because we don't want gaps, son. I needed it to even out a little bit more, and it was like I basically sanded just the edges, or mostly the edges, so I needed to get a little bit more in the middle to make it taper a little bit better. So we're pretty close to it fitting the neck very well. And remember, horn players, this is what us repairmen have to do for you. Okay, so here I'm trying it again, and I'm paying a little bit more attention. What I don't like is how that thing doesn't line up there, but that can be sanded down later. The other thing you could do is just take a razor blade and take it off, but I don't want to hurt the neck, and yeah, it's just it's not worth it sanding it so much easier in that realm. So now it's time to apply the glue to both areas, both the cork and the neck. Here I'm using a rubber cement. They make basically a faster drying rubber cement. You could really use almost anything, even super glue if you wanted to. But I personally am very anti super glue because you don't have a lot of time to reset what you're doing. So. I like glues that take a little while to dry so that way I can make adjustments if I have to. So here we're doing the great stirring of the glue and when you apply it, you want to be careful. As you can see, I've just blobbed some glue on there and then what I'm going to do is I just take, I don't know what to 
call it. It's like a little price tag thing that we have. It's very small. They're very useful for this. And all I'm going to do is basically use that as a brush and just spread it out as much as possible. Now, it's really important to get into those corners, too, because that's what's going to seal the deal, right? And you are going to get some glue on your hands. You, you know, just be prepared. You could wear gloves, but the fun part is the glue just sticks to the gloves. If you have access to trumpet oil, trumpet oil is a great tool combined with soap and water to get a lot of stuff off your hands, including super glue. So now I'm going to do the exact same thing to the neck. And in the past, I've had issues where I apply too much glue. So here, I think, yeah, that looks like too much glue. So what I did was I went ahead and just, you know, spread it out and was like, yeah, there's still too much glue. And I believe I wound up just basically, um, uh, you know, taking the excess off with a rag. And that's, that's what you should do. And again, if you had super glue and you had excess super glue, it would not be an easy thing to take off. So here I'm just getting that excess because this particular cork is shorter than the other cork that I'm gonna put on. Well, well, you'll see. <laughs> yeah. So with this particular rubber cement, I like to leave it for at least 10 minutes until it gets tacky and then put everything on. It bonds very well to metal. I've never had issues with this particular glue. At this point, this is your make it or break it moment. So we need this thing to be precisely where it needs to be. And I'm not pressing too hard just yet. You can see that I'm trying to get it off because it got into a spot that I didn't like. So because I didn't press down too hard, I'm able to just kind of take that glue off. So now I'm lining it all up, making sure that I'm underneath that collar and I'm just gonna go ahead and press as hard as I can just going around just like that. See? Pretty simple. And then, yeah. So, I had to do it all over. So here we are with a longer piece of cork. I made the cork longer again, so that way, in hopes that it would be harder for the kid to destroy it. I'm unsure how it was destroyed, but it seemed pretty deliberate because the cork was relatively new on their saxophone. So here we go again. I've, I've done another cork slightly longer, and there's my, I call them, them shit rags. <laughs> Basically, it's a rag that I use just to clean my hands or, you know, whatever substance is on something else. So here we are again. Here's my new cork. And again, just being extra careful not to put it on too hard, but just enough so I can get it right. So there we go. So now we're gonna travel all around here. Wow, I didn't notice that before, but it looks like it's about to crack at that other end. But that's okay. That's why I make the bevel rather long. Now it's looking like I just missed that seam. So that seam is gonna be a little off to the player's right. Again, that's okay, because we can sand it all down. And the name of the game here was making this as indestructible as possible. No holes, no nothing. You can get away with having some shallow holes in the cork, but yeah. So at this point, I'm just wrapping it up because this essentially is gonna help it stay put and it's also gonna start the compression process. This cork is rather thick, which means that I'm gonna have to do a boatload of sanding on it. So the more compression that I can get beforehand, the better. In fact, honestly, I should have just sanded the whole sheet down, but yeah. So at this point, I'm paranoid that something else bad is gonna happen. So I had used those clamps to help it. And here I'm just testing it to see if it floats around. 
If it floats, it means that my glue isn't quite dry and it's just not where it needs to be. And I think I felt confident, so I went ahead and I took off all the rubber bands. Now, if it still floats, it's actually okay because it would have given me time to put that seam exactly where I wanted it. But it's not like it's on top or anything, so it shouldn't really be a problem. Okay, well, I was wrong. It seems like I just got frustrated enough to just go ahead and knife that guy out. So basically, I'm really just perforating it because I don't want to press too hard. Otherwise, I'm going to scratch the neck, right? And nobody's going to know, but I'll know. And that's the important part. So here's my seam. It looks perfect. It's kind of cockeyed, which is okay. It doesn't need to be a straight line. So the first thing I'm going to do is sand down that weird end because I don't want the kid to be able to pull it. If I was doing this for an adult, I wouldn't care. And then I'm gonna sand the seam as well. That's just standard because you don't need that seam there. What happens is if that seam is there and you push the mouthpiece on, the whole thing's just gonna basically break and then you get to do it all over again. At this point, it would be number three for me. So I'm taking this particular sandpaper and then I use a higher grit to refine, right? Pretty simple. You can see that the cork is not completely even, so I'm just changing that with my higher grit sandpaper. It's just certain spots are higher than others, which needed to be fixed. And that just came from my quickie sanding of the entire thing in the beginning. So now basically you're just refining the sanding, trying to make it as even as possible. And I even sometimes will taper the top just so that way I could get the mouthpiece on a little bit. <laughs> so basically what I'm saying is I will make the top of the mouth of the of the cork, of the neck cork, be a little bit thinner so that way I can just ensure that the mouthpiece will go on immediately and then I can just adjust it from there. So you need to make it fit the mouthpiece so you know, it's all about compressing that cork and also trimming it down. Here I'm just doing the very common strip method. It's just a strip of sandpaper and I'm just going around with it. Notice I'm not doing the seam end. There I just pointed out a few micro holes, see that? And you could get away with those being there, but again, ultimate goal is to make this as indestructible as possible. So those things have to be filled in. And then here you can see because of my sanding, it's a lot more even. So there's the mouthpiece and yeah, it doesn't quite fit, right? Which means that I need to sand down the rest of it so it'll be thin enough to put that mouthpiece on. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do, son. Now that I've removed more material, I'm getting a legitimate hole, and if you really wanted to, you could pick that thing out, and I expected the student would do that. That's also why I made this thing very long, is so it would be hard to just rip off. Typically, this wouldn't really be a problem because it's not that big of a hole, which means that when you put the mouthpiece on, it's not gonna have any issues, it's not gonna make it open. But again, we're trying to foolproof this. So my first answer to this was just taking a Q-tip, cutting it in half, and using that little bit as basically an applicator for the contact cement. And then I, I just basically would sand it down. And this, I wasn't happy with this result because you could still see the metal. Um, and I realized that, wait a minute, I should be repairing this the same way that I repair clarinets when their thumb rest is screwy. So I'm trying to make it even, and I think that was part of my mistake, is that I should have just let that drip, that, that drop or glob of glue dry, and then sanded that down, just that glob of glue. But I was impatient, so I used this other method. So similar to the clarinet thumb rest solution, 
basically what happens is the holes for the thumb rest, the screw holes, either crack or you can't fit the original screw, screws in there because when the thumb rest got bent off, they open up. So the best thing to do is to fill it in with some super glue and, you know, plastic dust, basically. So here, instead of plastic dust, I'm gonna be using dust from the cork. And it's pretty easy to just get it and collect it. So there it is on my little sander. And what I'm doing is I'm just putting it into what I wanna fill in and just kind of shoving it in there, right? And then you just apply a little bit of super glue. So here I'm just basically dumping it all on. <laughs> right, so I'm turning that into kind of a pourer of sorts. And the good news is, is that that other glue is still there. So that's kind of providing a bed for it. And then I wind, wind up just adding super glue to it. I do this process several times actually and it really did help so this mouthpiece has a long end or a long shank as we call it and basically I'm just showing you how it has to fit on there so here you can see I made a little bit of headway there but yeah it's just not going on it's like I had to force it a bit so that means that I have to sand down more so back to sandy sanding of course, the act of sanding made those holes open back up a little bit again. So, again, I would have just left this if this wasn't for this particular kid. I would not have made this thing that long. But we're talking about trying to make this as secure as possible. No holes, hard to take off, right? So again, I'm going to gather some dust. And now, basically, I'm just continuing with the reinforcement here. So every time I'm adjusting the neck cord, essentially I kind of have to put on another layer, but it's okay because it's making it stronger. And then here I'm just dumping my excess dust on there because why not? So you can see the finished hole covering went pretty well. Just gotta sand that baby down a little bit and make it even and make it so the mouthpiece will fit on. Here I'm just taking some fine grit to this baby and there's that hole right there in the center. You can see it's working out pretty well. Looks pretty even. And throughout this time, what I've done also is basically put the mouthpiece on, or attempted to put the mouthpiece on the cork, sanded it, attempted again, sanded it down a little bit more. The problem was that I had to sand this cork so much that I actually wound up creating a few other holes, and I had to abandon the entire bottom side, or at least where the seam is, because I was concerned about it getting too thin. It wouldn't have been that big of an issue because I have a big overlap, so it could have been rescued, but we don't even want that to happen, right? So here you can see, I can get this thing in a little more, but you can see it's starting to crinkle a little bit, so that means that it's still not quite there. But hey, I got further. Now keep in mind, every time you do this, you're gonna wanna put a little bit of cork grease on it. It makes it harder to sand, yes, but it's gonna make the cork compress faster in the long run. I essentially apply it and then massage it in, and I do that a few times, actually. Here you can see the finished product. You can see that my seam came out really well. My holes got filled in pretty well, and I was pretty confident that this thing couldn't really be destroyed by some 10 year old. I mean, unless they took a knife to it or something. I made sure to use a lot of glue and all that jazz. So if you want to do this on your own, try it. It's not easy, but it's not that hard. And remember, you're going to run into problems just like I did. I mean, I probably did this repair a million times, but you know, it's different every time, folks.